Okay, welcome back everybody. So that's a quick break that we have. Then we will continue with the statistic in research one, the next lecture. Um, so I will call upon uh, Prof. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go to the next part of the lecture. Okay. I'm not going to cover on data collection because the, that part has been omitted from the research week. Okay. So instead, I'm going to go straight into the uh, data exploration. Okay. Last time, with these are all the things we covered. So don't worry, you're not missing anything. Okay. So this is what we will start. Okay, yeah. why am I having problem? Because, <laughs> okay, correct. Okay. okay, I'm seeing all the different screen right now. Once we already have the data, once we already have data, we're supposed to explore our data. Why we have to explore our data? Uh, number one, we have to look for mistakes. And number two, we have to check the distribution of the data. So I'm going to start with the first part, screening for mistakes. Okay. So to decide on how you explore, you have to first to take note what is your data type. Okay. So this one, I think you all know already. This has been covered uh, in great detail earlier when you were in undergraduate. So basically, we have two kinds of data. Uh, one is the quantitative data, things that takes the numerical values. My height, my weight. Okay. What's my height? 176 centimeter. What's my weight? This morning is 105.3. <laughs> oh boy, I miss my 92 kilogram this. I hate Mr. Pro. Okay, so then you have the, those that uh based on qualitative so qualitative is based on characteristic based on traits uh, lelaki perempuan male and female for us in Malaysia it is easy you are the male female or sajat okay so male and female is quite clear okay so uh not a problem but of course in overseas there is a problem because they have a he, her, I, them, whatever. I so do understand what they mean by that. Okay. But for us, qualitative, we have male and female, for example, or bangsa, we have Melayu, China, India, and lain lain. Okay. For the quantitative data, the data could be discrete data or it could be continuous. Discrete data, like the number of children. Okay. You cannot have four and a half. When we ask why half, the other one still in the oven. Okay. Uh, you should be whole numbers. Continuous. Or things like uh, you, you, can, you are really measuring and you can have decimal places. Uh, okay. For example, I mentioned about my height. My height was 176 uh, centimeter. If we convert into a meter, it can 1.76 meter. For the weight, uh, I really, you already know it's 105.3. Okay, so you can take a decimal basis. But if we go, uh, if we came from overseas, they call it differently. They either call it interval or ratio. Interval, where the number can be in the uh, from negative until positive. Ratio, where it start from zero onwards. So example for ratio data is like your height. You cannot have the height of negative one centimeter. Okay. So you have your height have to, it has to always to be positive. Okay. Same like weight. Ordinal data is based on ranking. For example, orthopedic is guilty of this. Orthopedic, when we ask them how they measure pain, they kata, 
They use the visual pin score. Ingat kan canggih gila lah visual pin score ni. Aku pergi tengok lah kertas ni. Aku pergi kertas keping. Nombor 1 sampai 10. Dia tu tak standar kan. Awak punya sakit ni 1 ke 10. 10 tu paling sakit. 1 tu paling tak sakit. Ha, itu sebenarnya adalah ordinal data. That is really ordinal data. Okay. Why? Because the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 until 10. There is no clear objective measurement. It is all based on subjective perception. Okay. The other one is nominal data. Nominal data means there's no ranking, there's no order. For example, male and female. Male and female. Tidak ada yang di atas, tidak ada yang di bawah. They are all equal. Except for the in the eyes of the Malaysian court. Lah. In the eyes of the Malaysian court, uh, male is more powerful than female. Why? If the father is Malaysian, the, the, the children is automatically Malaysian. But if the mother is Malaysian, married to a, a British or Mat Saleh, and the children were born overseas, it is not automatically done. Okay, uh, so we, that's why we had the cases pending in court about the citizenship of their children. Okay, uh, so that was the hangat news right now. Okay, so that's the meaning of nominal data. Okay, all right. So as mentioned just now, why we explore? We explore the data uh, to check for characteristics of data, look for errors, correct them. Then we look for the distribution pattern, the normal or not. Sometimes uh, I have no idea why. <laughs> I don't know why suddenly uh, Afik uh, wanted a video call with me. Okay. Okay. So the other thing is uh, may require transformation before further analysis. If you want to continue analyzing data in as continuous data, but if there is no way to convert your data to become continuous. Then you have to use non-parametric method for analysis. And this one we will cover on Thursday, eh, on Monday, actually. Okay, so how do we check for screening? Yeah, how do we check for, sorry, how do we check for errors? Very simple method. Usually the first thing we did with the SPSS, we run, uh, we run a frequency for all the data set. Okay. So this data is from Kelantan. The study was done in 1996-97 about the problem of SGA. SGA stands for small for gestational age. Small for gestational age. Uh, so we had uh, this, we ran this study in Kelantan and we found that some of the respondents, uh, they have some, they already have 15 children and now pregnant with the 16 one. <laughs> Aku yang empat orang anak pun dah pening kepala kau. Ni 16. Subhanallah. But apparently it is a norm in Kelantan. So I'm not going to argue with that. And you can look up what you see. So but when here, how we did check. We did check whether data makes sense or not. So we found that uh, there's a lady whose age is 25 years old but got 10 children. 10 children! Umur 25! Of course, lah, we, being, uh, we went back and asked uh, how come you got 20... Uh, how come you only 10 years... only 25 years old already got 10 children? Do you get married at 15? Do you have children every year? Oh, suddenly she said, no, no, I'm not the, not all the children are mine. Only five are mine. Lagi lima tu anak diri. Ni masalah orang tak faham soalan kan? Okay. Uh, that's why there's only seven in the house. Because the other five children are staying in the mak diri dia. Uh, power lah. Anak sepuluh kau. 
aku tak boleh bayar macam mana bapak dia cek duit nak, nak tanggung sepuluh orang anak this data we had among the <laughs> pregnant ladies from Kelantan suddenly we had sang kelembai as one of our respondent tinggi dia 4 meter tinggi kau know? oh so power 4 meter tinggi ya eh. macam mana dia masuk klinik tak tahu okay so we check turn out there's a wrong data entry suppose you only 1.7 then we went for the response about the gender of the children being born kita tengok ada yang male kecil, ada male besar. Tanya dengan misi apa, apa beza male besar, male besar. Ada yang male besar tu kotak besar masa lahir. Male kecil tu kotak kecil masa lahir. <laughs> Pani yang misi-misi kat kelata. Okay. So, uh, you have to check, eh? you have to check for the mistake like this. Then when we check for the data for the mother's weight, suddenly we had a mother whose weight is 484 kilograms. When I saw this data for the first time, I was happy. Wow, suddenly, suddenly somebody heavier than me. Okay, suddenly, suddenly. Tengok, tengok. Wow, salah data enter. Sebab apa? Sebab bila next follow kita tengok berat dia hanya 45 kilograms. Oh, gila. 400 kilograms tu pun. Dalam masa tiga bulan. So turn out they're supposed to be 48.4 kilogram. The other thing that we run is we run the box plot. Why we run the box plot? Because we need to... Oi, cepat keluar mesin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Tukar ide. Okay. Uh, the whiskers extend, okay, you are looking at the box plot, so box plot, you're looking like this. Okay. Uh, basically, you have the smallest, uh, the small outliers here, the large outliers here, the one in between, uh, this one is the, 20, the 25th centile, the median, and the, sorry, 75th centile, 50th centile, and the 25th centile. Okay, so that is the meaning of all this marking. Why is it important to know this? So that you can interpret your box plot. When you run the box plot to detect the wrong data entry. I like to use the box plot for the task screening because they give you the number of the patient's record that is wrong. So here the, the mother who is 484 kilograms, the record is number 73. So I just go to the record 73 and correct the data. So basically, what we do with data cleaning, you click, you identify the the wrong values, check back with the questionnaire, do the correction, and we need to do the correction before we start the transformation, recoding, and analysis. My apologies. Uh, I'm happy they're giving me the the break on Saturday and Sunday. So I can recover back my voice by Monday. Okay, so we already covered about uh, how to check for errors. Let's look at data summary. Okay, for that, uh, let's look at data distribution. For you to know the data distribution, you should be able to get the mean, the standard deviation, the symmetry, and the kurtosis. Okay. So by knowing the mean, the standard deviation, skewness and ketosis, you can decide whether the data is normally distributed or not. Okay, so for normal distribution, here we are, you put in your data. Okay, please take note what data we check for normal distribution, only the continuous data not the categorical data. That day we had a PhD student who checked her data gender for normality, the lucky dan perempuan. So sometimes I wonder how they manage to enter the PhD program. Okay, so just take note, uh, you you check your data, the continuous data, whether it's normal or not, 
by testing for by uh, get, drawing the histogram, then you can see whether it is normally distributed or not. Okay, these are the things that you learn uh, during the undergraduate days. What is meant by normal distribution? I'm not going to cover that again. So basically, the issue here, why as for the data analysis, you have to know about normality because it dictates the type of analysis that you can run on the data. Please take note, it affects the analysis because it dictates the type of analysis that you can run on the data. Okay? All right. If data is normally distributed, then you can do student t-test, you can do ANOVA, you can do PET t-test, you can do Pearson correlation and linear regression. Well and nice. If your data is not normal, you end up having to do non-parametric analysis. And non-parametric analysis are things like will Coxon rank some test, Crucial Wallis one way ANOVA test, will Coxon sign the rank test. This one I got it wrong. <laughs> I cannot type and change it because this thing is a picture. Then the Spearman and Candle rank correlation. So how do we test for normality? We can do it two ways, either graphically or statistically. Okay, that's it. Okay. So graphically, we have histogram, we have stem and leaf, we have the box plot, we have the normal probability plot, the detrended normal plot. Statistically, we have the kolmogorov smirnov we have the shapiro weeks we have the students ketosis. Okay. When I was doing my master's, I did not know about Kolmogorov Smirnov. Uh, upon graduation, I was in charge of a group of students from Australia. They're doing a master's of community nutrition with us. So they were doing a study among the uh, problems of malnutrition among the elderly in Taman Desa uh, Nanding. The Taman that got flooded in until only the surah only uh, surah can be seen. Okay, I hope the the old people who were surveyed at the time all survive. Okay, so when uh, the person in, uh, in charge of analysis asked me, Dr. Azmi, uh, do you know called Mogros I said I don't know. Don't think I know him personally. Okay, who punya that tanya pasal statistic. So I asked the JKM department, the senior lecturers, only Rampal knows about this because he heard about it in a lecture somewhere in Harvard once. He opened up his books, he got 12 books on statistics. He found only one small paragraph about Colmogros Milnov. Okay. So basically, why is Colmogros Milnov? Uh, we were in the 1930s. Andrei Nikolaevich Kolmogorov and Andy Vismilnov, his student came up with an approach for comparison of distribution that did not make use of the parameters, the mean standard deviation, skewness and ketosis. So this one is known as the Kolmogorov Smirnov test. So just to know that. Okay, so the other one is about, we're talking about normal distribution, is about skewness. Whether it is skewed to the right or skewed to the left. Okay. When we are looking, talking about skew, we're not looking at the big behind. We're looking at the tail. Eh? We're looking at the tail. The other thing is meso, uh, for ketosis. Ketosis is how sharp is the peak. Okay, It is described the shape of the curve. Uh, usually, what is not considered as no, uh, normally distributed is the mesocritic. The mesocritic. The leptocritic and the platycritic is not normally distributed. So for it to be decided to be normally distributed, the skewness should be between minus one and plus one. The ketosis should also be between minus one and plus one. Doctor, where do we get to see this? Okay. You get to see this inside the command explore. Inside the command, you go to SPSS, you click on the command uh, analysis, select descriptive, then you click explore, 
you will get all the necessary results like I'm going to show you from now on. Okay, you got the, just now I showed you or the, not, the histogram. Then they show you the Q and Q plot. So the Q and Q plot, the concept is simple. All the dots must be on the green line. All the dots must be on the green line. If most of the dots are on the green line, your data is normally distributed. The other thing is this detrended normal Q and Q plot. Uh, the detrended plot, basically the data should be distributed at random, not following a certain trend. Don't worry about that. Then, of course, the statistic. We talk about skewness, we talk about ketosis. Where do we look for it? We look at this table that we get and when we run the command analysis, descriptive, explore. Doctor, where can we learn about SPSS? You can learn about SPSS from the free course on mooc.ukm.my. Uh, just now you saw on my bio data, bit.ly slash fk6163 stats. Just enter that link. You can get the nota, the notes on how to do as well. They got notes and videos. Eh? So you don't have to worry about uh, paying for a course. I'm giving it for you to you all for free. Okay, just to make sure you all get it, I'm going to type the link under the chat. bit.ly slash fk6163 stats. This one does not have the enrollment key. This one does not have the enrollment key. Anybody can join. Anybody can join. It is free for all. How long it will be available? I can only guarantee it is available until I am retired. Fully, uh, really retired, which is on the in November. After that, I'm not sure. I'm not sure eh? because because uh, then you you uh, it is we are at the mercy of UKM whether they want to continue or they want to uh, cut off my account. Okay, so you can run the analysis. So when you run the analysis, what do we look for? For your data to be normally distributed, the mean, the mode, and the median should be the same. So you can see here, the mean and the median is similar. 151, 151. How about the ketosis? Ketosis and skewness, they are between plus minus one. So you are okay. Next is the KS test, the Kolmogorov now, the thing that we keep mentioning now. Okay. It should not be significant. The p value should not be significant. If it is not significant, then your data is normally distributed. Okay. Again, I repeat the mean, the mode, the median must be the same. If they are the same, then they are normally distributed. If they are not the same, they are either skewed to the right or skewed to the left. If your data is skewed, the KS test will become significant. If your data is skewed, the KS test will become significant. If your data is normal, the KS test will not be significant. Okay? So that is, in short, uh, why we check the data for no, no, normal distribution. If your data is normal distribution, you are okay because uh, you can use the usual statistical test. However, the KS test is very sensitive. Yeah, it is very yeah. more sensitive than uh, the usual uh, to the sample size of the data. If a sample size is less than 30, your data forever they report as normally distributed. If the data is very large, larger than 100, even a slight deviation will result in being reported as abnormal distribution. Therefore, it is not something that uh, you can use. Okay, So you cannot use KS test if your sample size is less than 30. You cannot use your KS test if your sample size is larger than 100.
So what to use instead? Less than 30, not normal. 30 to 100, you can rely on the KS test. If larger than 100, you only accept the KS test if it says that your, it is not significant. If it says that your data is significant, then do not rely on the KS test. Instead, look at the graph, look at the skewness and ketosis. If the skewness and ketosis are normal, then your data is normally distributed. Okay, so that is a lecture about data exploration. So we already covered about data exploration. Okay, uh, I have a feeling that I'm supposed to cover on summarize. I can't remember exactly. Uh, because uh, I think the title is Explore and Summarize. So basically, summarize is basically how you present your data. Okay. So instead of uh, writing down every single respondent inside your, from your, your study, you will summarize the results. For example, uh, what kind of cases are treated by the secondary department. Okay. You, you will adjust the data. So if it is numerical data, you will present the mean and standard deviation. Okay. And uh, mean standard deviation, very easy. Okay, it is just, you can just click on SPSS, they will give you the mean on your data. And it will also, also give you the standard deviation of your data. We already shown you about screen and statistics earlier. So mean, very simple, it is the average of everything. It is the average of everything. However, mean is very much affected by our bias. If you have a major outliers, it will affect the, uh, the mean value. Okay. So mean very simple. You just sum up everything. Okay. And then divide it by total number of observation. Then that is the value of the mean. Very simple. Standard deviation. There are two standard deviation. One is population standard deviation. The other one is sample standard deviation. If it is population standard deviation, the it is n only, not n minus one. If it is sample set division, it is n minus one. Since we are doing a study on a group of sample, so they will always use the n minus one. Okay. So the bigger, the larger the set division, the broader is the base. Okay. And how we calculate, uh, it is based on the difference of the observed data against the mean. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about that. So everything is generated by the software. Nobody uses the manual data analysis. The last time I had a student from overseas, she did her medical degree in overseas. She came uh, back to Malaysia. Dia tak macam Malina. Malina dia sambung belajar kan. Ini dia came back to Malaysia. Then she did uh, masters in UKM. Uh, she did all the analysis manually. Took her three days. The worst part, most of the analysis were wrong. When she came to see me, I did the whole thing in 15 minutes. One five. She cried. She said, for three days, I did this manually. Her kids were angry at her. Her husband was angry at her. She suffered so much just to come up with the analysis and came to me and I said, everything is wrong. And I did the whole thing for her again in 15 minutes, one five. Okay, so please don't calculate manually. Use SPSS. Doctor, SPSS can believe. Okay, SPSS ada versi evaluasi. Ni cakap Melayu eh, kenapa ni cakap Melayu? Takut orang putih tengok. Kan ditangkap eh. SPSS ada versi evaluasi. You boleh pergi ke SPSS.com, klik butang evaluation. You boleh download versi evaluasi. Boleh guna sebulat. 
So bila guna semua? Bila dah collect data dah habis, complete, dah tak ada nak buat apa lagi, baru you download. Baru you download. Versi evaluasi. So dalam masa dua sebulan tu habiskan semua analisa. Okay. Buat report. Bagi kat supervisor. Kalau supervisor suruh buat analisa balik, expenses dah expired. Tak apa. Buat email lain. Register email lain. Download balik expenses. Buat lagi sekali. Okay. Tapi kena buat dekat komputer lain lah. <laughs> Alright. So guna expenses. Alright. Oh banyak jari ni. Oh up up up. Bagus bagus bagus. Saya tak boleh nak ngajar cara yang illegal. Siapa yang nak yang cari cari illegal cari Isaac Tan. Isaac Tan tahu macam mana nak buat cara illegal. <laughs> okay. So median sama juga. You can just use the space to generate. This is how. Basically median is the middle point. Same like quartiles. Again quartiles is just uh, for data that is not normally distributed. We divide the data into four equal parts. Uh, these are the quartiles. Again, this one is you're going to generate using XPSS. Just take note, quartiles are just the, the borders of the four values. So this is 24. This is 30 plus 32 become 31. 41 plus 43, you end up with a uh, centile of 40, 42. Okay. So how this is presented, you need to put median 31 in bracket 24 and 42. So this is the 25th centile. This is the 70, 75th centile. Okay. Laser point, laser point, laser ping. Okay. Okay. Salah laser ni tu. Lepas tu terus tak boleh pakai. <laughs> terus tak boleh pakai butang enter. Mode. Uh, the number. Uh, the mode is useless. Forget it. Don't bother. Okay. Uh, mode is useless. Don't bother. So as uh, students, as researchers, the only thing you need to know is I have the mean or the median. When to use the mean, when to use the median. We use the mean when the data is normally distributed. I repeat, we use the mean when the data is normally distributed. We use the median when the data is not normally distributed. So we use the mean and set the division when the data is normally distributed, we use the median and interquartile inter range <coughs> when the data is not normally distributed. By the way, IQR is the difference between the 75th centile and 25th centile. Personally, I find that this thing does not tell you anything. Okay, So I usually leave the, the, the original value, the 25th centile and the 75th centile. Okay, so this one I already explained earlier. So you have the, this one, not normal. If the, the mean and the median is not the same, so much different, then it's not normal distribution. We use the median and IQR. If the mean, mode, and median are the same, then it is normally distributed. We use the mean and the standard division. Okay. Uh, Oops, and that's the end of the. I don't know why suddenly become black. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Okay, and that's it. There's the second part of the lecture. Back to the chapter set. That is one line. Guarantee that is one line. This part is no question one. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, uh, Prof. So um, I think we should opt for another break that's okay. planned and okay. return back around 11.15. If it's that okay with the audience. <laughs> <laughs> we would have another two lectures back to back. So I leave it to you to decide, Prof. Okay. Uh, limo Blah Minute. Yes. Uh, but before that, I just answer this one. Okay. What, what is the difference between standard error and the standard deviation? The standard error is the value of the standard deviation by divided by the square root of n. Divided by the square root of n. Uh, standard deviation, 
as I showed you earlier, it is just the difference of the data, the observed data against the mean. The mean. When do you send the error? When do you send the deletion? Based on the journal that you are submitting to. Under the Faculty of Medicine, we ask for the standard deviation. Why we use standard deviation, not the standard error? I don't know. This thing was decided before I was even here. Okay, I cannot say before I was born because I was born in 1967. UKM started in 1973. The master's program started in UKM, I think, around the year 1990s. Okay. So I do not know when this was decided, but I know it was decided to use. <laughs> By the way, Isaac Tan said, uh, legally you can email Bishri at ucam.edu.my to get their legal submission. Uh, I know there's a problem with going through Bishri because basically uh, they are a bit finicky with giving, sharing the license uh, with students. Reason is because nowadays you can got limited limited uh, license. Last time you can pay half a million to SPSS Malaysia and we got license unlimited for everyone. But I think about three years, four years ago, we have problem with that. Why we have problem? You can can't afford to pay half a million every year. Membayar ufti, membayar ufti kepada SPSS. And then turn out, SPSS Malaysia is not really SPSS company. SPSS Malaysia is just a company that was created in Malaysia and does not belong to it. the SPSS. Turn out, SPSS itself belongs to IBM. Okay, so nowadays, uh, you can buy the license from this the, SP the IBM SPSS distributors and we pay only a small amount and we only have license i think for perubatan they only give 20 and the 20 is meant for the computers in the computer room okay so that's why uh, very hard to get the legal version uh, from ukm but uh, especially for by isaac tan uh, it is possible to contact bangi the ptm apparently bangi ptm is much more malleable, much more easier to get the license compared to, to those from Perubatan itself. Why? Because Perubatan got only 20 license. Alright? Okay, thank you. I think that's it. Okay, we have break. Bye-bye. Yeah.